Hmm, what do you know? It's time for another video from Doc. Man, this guy makes the best videos you've ever seen. I love this guy. Love this guy. Can you tell I got a new iPhone 8? <laughs> That's that new talking emoji. I was making them for my granddaughter. I was going, hey, this is Pop Pop. How you doing? I said, dude, I got to grab one of those. I figured out how to download it and use that. Anyways, I am soaking wet and it's only about 1030. I've been going since 6 a.m. this morning, including a trip to Lowe's, sanding, reseeding the back green, cutting it, cutting the front, harvesting vegetables. It's going to be just a mashup, a Sunday mashup. We're gonna start doing Sunday mashups. That's what we're gonna do. I was gonna do something else about uh, grass cutting levels and it got way out of hand. So here's what I'm gonna do. Yesterday I came out and did a, a late harvest on the vegetables. I'll put that up, I'll show you that. Uh, this morning I came out and I decided I'm gonna get my soil test and I got my soil meter coming back to me today. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little reseeding and sanding on this green back here. I'll show you that. And then I'll take you out right now and I'll show you the front because I just cut the front grass. Looks friggin' amazing. Absolutely amazing. But my shirt is like 10 pounds soaking wet. My uh, oh. humidor shirts. You can get these things if you want them on the website. They're dirt cheap. So anyways, let's go out front and I'll show you that. I sort of left all my, I left all my gear sitting here for this sanding project. So I'll come back and I'll show you that full project. Lord have mercy. This heat is just killing us. So yesterday, uh, Jesse came out with the rookie, cut the back. The backyard looks amazing. So the backyard looks absolutely amazing. Again, this is a half, half inch. I call it a fairway cut, which is right at half an inch. Uh, I'd be happy to play this on any golf course in the world. Gorgeous. But I'll take you out front. Now the front, we didn't scalp the front. So we put growth regulator down and we were cutting and I got a little bit of a yellowing. I said, I'm gonna notch it up a quarter of an inch, which I hate to do, but you gotta see how it looks today. Everyone else's lawn in the neighborhood is burned out. It's fried. I just cut it. You gotta see this. I was like, dude, this looks gorgeous. Oh, I hope you can see that because it is so gorgeous. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. I'm just going to walk around and show it to you. Because it is beautiful. I mean, there's not one spot on this lawn that doesn't look perfect. Zero weeds, zero bad spots. Read your lawn stripes, Doc. Read your lawn stripes. <laughs> so there you go. You wanted some stripes, and I got some stripes. But uh, I gotta tell you, man, I'm just shocked. This yard looks just amazing, absolutely amazing. So someone asked how I clean off my real mower afterwards. It's pretty simple. I just put it on a downhill slope. I get the hose, rinse her off. And I give the blades a little spin while I'm at it too. And then what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll leave this in the sunshine for 20 to 30 minutes. And then if you want, just come back and spray a little WD-40 on it. That's how I clean it. Well, aren't you just relaxed? You're smart on the sofa in the shade. What a smart Jack Russell. And what about you? <laughs> what are you doing in there? Oh, that's silly. That is just so silly. You guys are lazy. Let me just show you real quick. Basically what we do is we just adapt our garden. If we start to lose something, we pull it and we plant something else in. I may actually put some eggplant in the back 
and get a few eggplants later this fall. But like this morning, I just came out for a quick, for a quick little harvest. Oh, let me put this back in the shade where you can see it. So this is my morning harvest right here. So my cherry tomatoes, which are delicious by the way. They are amazing. Mm, so good. Tons of green peppers, cherry tomatoes, some backup tomatoes, yellow squash, cucumbers. Just beautiful. One day, one day I'll be able to have a relaxing Sunday. <laughs> <clears throat> so what I did today, so what I did today was I came by with my, uh, <clears throat> my hard, I guess you could call this a leveling rake. It has a leveling side, but I came by with a tooth side and I hard scored my green. So, I mean, I raked it as hard as I could back and forth back and forth and basically I created that millions of channels out here um, and stirred up that top level so I broke up the top level about an eighth of an inch maybe a little bit deeper um, I put a little bit more seed I put down now we're doing it already has Bermuda and you can't get dwarf Bermuda seed so we're putting down blue and bent creeping dwarf so we're going to try it again see if the pre-emergent was the factor i will have my soil test today and my ph meters uh, i'll get back today i'll test it so if i need to do any adjustments i can do those probably tonight or tomorrow i'm gonna put a little bit of sand on it well first i'm gonna cut it uh, i'm not gonna pick up the clippings i'm gonna allow the clippings to go back for a little bit of shade and then i'm gonna throw some sand down on it too and level it a little bit I don't have enough sand, I don't think. I only got like five bags. So it may be time for a Lowe's run while everyone's still asleep. The only way that this method works is if you have really dry sand. So that's why I made a run to Lowe's and I went out back and I found a pallet that was nice and dry and I picked up 10 more bags of super dry. If it's damp at all, it just doesn't work in a spreader. Well, you have to have a big spreader with a big gap and leave it fully open.
So uh, that's my uh, that's my big 48 inch. I have a 36 as well, but the 48 is going to work better back here on the green on that level. I'll put a link to that one. That's the best one I've ever tried for the money. <clears throat> metal handle, metal rake, two thumbs up. So. Now I just got to go back and I got to check. I'm going to use the rake to see if I have any dips. I got three more bags, but the sand is kind of wet. So I'll use that to fill any dips. Jack Russell. Okay, so what I'm doing now is um, I'm taking the 48 inch rake and I'm going very slowly over facing the sun. The rake will be shadowed out. And if there are any big dips, I'll see sunshine and know that I have this. I have some wet sand that I can use. So really what I'm doing is I'm just going through really slow. And I'm just not seeing, just not seeing any gaps. Okay, so this gets this gets a little bit complicated, but uh, my soil test should be back. I'm gonna assume that I'm low on phosphorus back here, so I mixed up Super Juice with some Bloom Booster, basically Miracle Grow Bloom Booster, and that's like a 10-50-10. So I still wanted the humic and the sea kelp and the micros and the iron. I wanted all that from Super Juice, but I wanted to bump up the phosphorus. So I put in like, in here I've got half a cup of Super Juice and half a cup of the Bloom Booster granules. So I'm gonna spray that on. Um, my pH meter will be back here today. So I'll uh, adjust, check the pH. I'm assuming my pH is probably high. Um, and I've got some liquid sulfur that I can spray on, but I got to wait for my results. So I'm going to test it too. So I got a bunch of stuff going on. It's tough to explain. This is more of a soil correction. So that's why I'm watering this in now. This is not a foliar feeding or something. This is to get more phosphorus into the soil. So when these seeds germinate, they go into a better environment. Same thing with the pH. When I find out my test, when I check today, if I need to put out liquid pH, I'll put that out and I'll push it into the soil. Finally, my pH meter. I'm not even going to go into it. It's a long story. Someone borrowed it. It disappeared. So I had to order another one. Guess what just showed up? Well, five. I thought it was going to be high. Good thing. This is why we test. This is why we test people. Five. So, this is why we test. <laughs> For some reason, I just had this idea that my pH was going to be high. 
Um, maybe because I used so much humichar. But actually, it's back over here. It's the normal low. This is why we test. I mean, so I just got my meter. <laughs> and I'm at a 5.5 here. You let it sit for about 20 seconds. <sighs> I am at a five there. I was actually so convinced it was going to be high that I actually ordered some pH down. <laughs> now I got to get some liquid lime and get it on here ASAP. All right, I've been searching forever. For the perfect plant that contrasts with the fence and the grass. And today I found them. It's a perennial bush, blooms all season long, and they're not expensive at all. Look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? I mean, that is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Uh, Lowe's on this side of the town only had two, so I'm going to sneak over there tomorrow morning to the other Lowe's and see if they might have some. But I just want to show you first, what is it, Doc? I don't know, it's something pretty looking. Here you go, here's the name. Can you read it? Taiwan Red, what is that, Exora? Exora? So, 14 bucks, cheap. So I figured I'd just go ahead and show you how you plant this hard clay soil when you're doing perennials. Don't make a straight down hole. You actually make a hole that's sort of slanted so that if you have excess rain or water, it can drain out. Don't go too deep with it. Only go about three quarters of the plant depth. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna massage this plant. <coughs> We're going to get some of the dirt out of it and basically just open up the roots. I've got potting soil and I've got the original red clay. Mix it up. So I'm going to mix some of this. And I'm going to put red clay and potting soil back in here. So there's red clay and potting soil mixed up. So one thing that you'll notice is that um, I always dig and put dirt into a wheelbarrow. Don't set it on your grass. Again, mix it in 50-50. Don't bury it too deep. Keep it level. Make your hole more flat and wide. Don't dig a straight hole. And uh, that should be about it. So keep the Jack Russell out of them. We should be. Okay, real quick, just so you know, my emergency treatment for that crazy pH level was to take a half a box of baking soda, put it into this with hot water, make sure it was all melted. I sprayed it on the green and then I watered it and hand watered it with a hose. And now I am running also my irrigation system that's about to spray me. So I've got five heads around this green. I obviously don't want to come out here with something like a pelletized lime on a putting green. Um, I could buy liquid, They, you can buy liquid, um, it's called uh, pH up for soils and for lawns. 
you can find liquid lime, you can do it. Uh, but like I said, this is an emergency treatment. It's fairly natural, it's cheap. It's a box of baking, baking soda. You know, the Arm & Hammer square boxes, not powder, soda. Works. Okay, so there we are in the shade, 97.5. <laughs> Crap, wow. <laughs> it is scorching, I know. It's 110 where you are. <laughs> Dude, it is hot out here. Oh, man. Anyways, you wonder why I start working at 6 a.m.? This is why. Because by 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you just can't be out here. I don't know how the hell... Bermuda grass survives in this in this heat. I just don't understand. It's amazing. If this was fescue, this would be absolutely fried. Fried. So basically what I'll do is I'll just walk around and I'll be looking for hot spots on the lawn. And if I see any hot spots, I'll put some water down on them. Uh, that late afternoon where it's scorching hot. You're going to have some from debris or whatever, but I gotta go to the check on the garden. Just, you gotta really sort of pay attention to what's going on when you get like this. It just gets crazy. So, that was a busy Sunday. <laughs> the son and his girlfriend are gonna come over. And, uh, I don't know. But I'm gonna probably stay inside. It's too damn hot out here. Anyways, guys, hit subscribe and I'll talk to you later. Doc.